today we got a product review on the IK Multimedia Arc 3, and we'll get to it right after this introduction. Welcome to Audio Sorcerers, Wizards and Gurus, my channel. I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So in today's video, we are talking about the IK Multimedia Arc 3 room correction. And I'm gonna take you through a whole tutorial on how to set this up and how to tune your extra room with it. So this is the uh, box that comes in here. This is the uh, cross grid I did because I actually own the Arc 2. So let's actually open it up real fast and take a peek at uh, what it looks like here. Okay, so it basically comes with um, your information here to actually go and download the project. It gives you your serial number and everything to do that. And then what I was so confused about when I first got this was, this is kind of small here. You're like, well, it's supposed to come with a microphone, right? Well, where's the microphone? So the microphone is actually in here and it is super tiny. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. This is how big the microphone is here. And it comes with a little clip in here too, if you can see that. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the computer and then I'm going to download the software, get it registered, and then we're going to follow the instructions and we're going to tune out the room. So let's get to it. So according to the paper within the box, we're supposed to go to ikmultimedia.com forward slash am. So let's go there. Cool. So if you do not have any IK Multimedia products, you're going to need to go in here and you're going to have to download the authorization manager. You could do it for Windows or Mac. So I already have it installed because I have some other products. So we're just gonna go right into that now. So I launched the authorization manager here. And basically what this wants us to do is to register our product. So let's go to uh, next here. Check it for internet connection, of course. Give it a second. Okay, so it wants me to put in my username and password. So I'll put this in, I'm not gonna let you see it. So once you put in your username and password, it's gonna want you to put in the serial number for the product that you want to register. So I'm gonna pop that in now. So once you put your serial number in and it's good to go, you're gonna get a green okay right here. And then after that, you just have to hit next. So after your product is done being registered, this is gonna pop up here. And this option is gonna take you into the My Products section of the website, and it's gonna allow you to actually download the software. So let's launch that. Okay, so I'm in my products now, and I see the ARC3 here, and now I'm just going to download it for Windows here. Cool, so we'll let that download, and then I'm going to install it. You don't need to watch me install it, and then we'll launch it, and we'll follow the instructions, and we'll tune out the room. So I've completed the installation, and I've launched the ARC3 analysis software. So we're going to be doing our room tuning within the software, and we're going to create a profile for our room. So when we launch the actual plugin in our DAW, we'll be able to access that profile. So on this first page here, you have an option to either watch a tutorial or hit next. Uh, you don't need to watch the tutorial because you're watching one right now. So let's hit next. And in this page here for microphone selection, you're gonna to wanna to choose which microphone you have. Now, if you have a ARC 2 or earlier kit, you may have one of these microphones here, but if you get the new full kit like I did, you have the new microphone here, which is the black faced one. So I'm gonna leave that one selected and I'm gonna to go to next. In the audio section here, I want to select our output device. So let me go here and I'm gonna select Focusrite USB ASIO and that's because that's my audio interface. And as you saw, it selected my left output as one and my right output as two, which that's pretty normal. And my sample rate is 48 kilohertz and I have it set there because I'm shooting a video. Now you may have it at 44.1 and that's completely fine. Um, and then over here, uh, you want to make sure your input device is also this, if that's what you're using. And then make sure you have your proper mic channel selected. That's the one that you have the ARC microphone plugged into. And for buffering size, um, I would probably say go to the lowest here. So we'll do 128. And uh, after that, we just need to hit next. So on this page here, you're going to select your typical listening area. So as it says here, select the room configuration that best represents the listening area that you would like to correct. The images are indicators only. Use them simply to orient yourself in the analysis process. Note, a smaller listening area provides the most accurate correction. Uh, my studio is pretty small, so this works out pretty good for me. So we got Project Studio, which looks like this. Um, I would say mine's maybe a little bigger than that. Let's see, Studio Monitor Spot. Um, that's probably more like mine. Let's see what else we got. Um, well, we don't want to do the back area. 
I'm just trying to debate between monitor spot and wide. I usually mix in the center. I'm not really kind of shuffling around. So we'll go with studio monitor spot here. Let's go to next. Cool. So over here, it says position the microphone. Place your microphone to align with your ears both horizontally and vertically. So in this scenario, we're going to be putting this mic straight forward, which is actually a little bit different than the other microphone that comes with the ARC-2 system, which actually goes straight up, where this one actually points forward. And over here, you got a nice little picture here kind of showing you the setup. And uh, if you didn't know this, you're supposed to have equal distance between you to this speaker and this speaker to that speaker and then back to you. Essentially, you're creating a equilateral triangle. I believe that's the proper geometrical term for that, so don't quote me on that. Um, okay, so after we have this up to our ear in this placement here, we're going to hit next. So in this section here, we're going to set the playback level and then the mic preamp level. Now the playback level is uh, the level that's going to be coming out of your studio monitors. And you're going to want to set this level close to what you're used to mixing to. So if you use some sort of dB meter to set up your mixing levels, you're going to want to use it now. It's not necessary though. And you're going to set this by doing the play test. And then after that, you're going to go to the mic preamp level here and you're going to adjust your microphone to make sure that when you have this level where you like it here and it's playing in the room and the microphone's picking up, the microphone's picking up in this correct section here. So I've actually already gone through and set this up here. So I'm just going to hit the play test and it's going to do the correction here and then it's going to finish with an OK. So watch it in action here. Cool. So we got it done there. So we're all good to go. So let's hit the next button. All right. So this is the room analysis section and this is where all the fun begins. Uh, so it's saying that we need seven measurement points taken at three different height levels for a total of 21 points. These are approximate layer heights at which you will need to place the microphone. So layer one is going to be six inches below the ear level. Layer two is going to be ear level. And layer three is going to be six inches above the ear level. And it's going to say that the system will guide you through the mic positioning and measurement takes. Please follow the next steps. So let's hit measure layer one. All right, now that we're prepared to take our room measurements, I'm going to turn this into a fun little montage and we'll go back and forth between the screenshot view here and a live view of me actually placing the microphone. And we'll put some fun music behind it. All right, so let's go. So we have completed layer one of the room correction process. So now we're going to go to uh, layer two, which is putting the microphone at ear level. So let's do that. So now we've completed layer two. So now we need to move on to layer three, which is actually gonna be six inches above ear level. So let's get that set up. All right, so we completed all of our room measurements. And the last thing we need to do is give our uh, correction a name. So typically you're just gonna wanna put it as your studio. So I'm just gonna put audio source or keep it simple. And then down here, you can select an icon for the type of monitors you have. I have GABL monitors. So let's see if they have anything in there like that. Oh, cool. So these ones right here, these look pretty much like my monitors. So I'll select that. And then we're gonna hit save. 
Awesome. So now it says that we are done, and then Audio Sorcerer is our measurement name, and we can actually just go to quit now. All right, so I've launched Pro Tools here. I want to show you the ARC3 plugin. Now, it's very important to put the ARC3 plugin as the last insert on your master channel here. So we're going to put it in here, and it's going to be under Other and Pro Tools, ARC3. Cool. So we got the uh, Audio Sorcerer measurement here as our selected one, and that's because that's the only one we've taken so far. But if we had more in here, they would be in this list here. Now we're shooting for a flat target, and the target is in white. As you can see, it's straight across here, it's flat. Now you can have some other custom targets in here that you can shoot for. And then um, under the phase section here, you have two options. You have natural and you have linear. So the natural is actually gonna help um, correct some, I guess you can say, not so good monitor placement or monitors in general or a bad acoustic room. Because what it's gonna do is it's gonna correct that phase and it's gonna give you a solid uh, center, especially for the low end. So the linear phase is actually considered to be a little bit more accurate, but it doesn't correct that. So the manual actually says that it's preferred to use the natural option over linear. So we're gonna leave it on natural. Uh, you got your metering section here. You can do peak, RMS, and LUFS, which is great. You could do post and pre, and then you could turn on and off your correction with this button here. You also have a trim option. And then up in the virtual monitor section, which this is fantastic, you can uh, select um, different scenarios. So be like, oh, I got a 15 inch laptop. So that's gonna do a whole correction to your room right there for that. And then you can also do things like a smartphone. And you know, you really need this stuff because people are listening on this and it's hard to make sure that you have the right amount of low end or, you know, especially on bass because um, bass can disappear if it's so much in the low end and you don't have enough of those low mids to transpire onto the, uh, you know, smartphones and laptop speakers. So this will, you know, help you with that portion of your mixing. So we'll put it back to off, and um, that'll bring us back to our, our room profile here. Now you have an RTA option here, which you can turn on and off, and that's basically gonna show you the EQ spectrum across as it's playing, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you can go to the edit section here, and you can do some more fine tuning. Um, I wouldn't recommend using this because, I mean, we've done the measurements, we've done it the way they want us to do it. What's the point going here and try to you know make adjustments unless, I guess if you've been doing this for like 30 years, you can really tell what some deficiencies are in the room or in certain you know situations. And yeah, you can make up for them here and create your custom profile. But yeah, so I recommend anybody though using this, don't mess with this section here. You know, leave your, your, your measurements as is. Let's go back to play here. So yeah, I mean, this is pretty much, this is pretty much the plugin here. I mean, your, your before measurements here are in green. Your after measurements are in this reddish orange and you can see them going across there. So the correction is, you know, it's pretty flat. I do see a couple little, you know, boost up here. At, what is that about? Maybe about 80 Hertz there, and that's probably around 400 Hertz there. So I'm not <clears throat> sure why it read it that way, but you know, maybe this algorithm does something I don't know about, but uh, I'm definitely am anxious to use this. So I did want to do one quick comparison and just show you the GUI for ARC2 compared to ARC3 so you can kind of see what the difference is. So we'll launch ARC2. Oops. Oh yeah, remember in Pro Tools, you gotta to click the red button here and turn it off actually, and then you can have two plugins open at one time. So if you're new to Pro Tools, there's a quick little lesson for you on that. Okay, so obviously the ARC2 looks pretty dated. Um, you know, these are much smaller looking too, so it's harder to see what is being done. You can go to like the edit view here and see something, you know, a little bit more, a little bigger, I guess you could say. And, uh, you know, it's got a little monitoring section and everything. I will say though, when you go to target curves here and you choose some of these virtual monitoring options here, this thing can take, I don't know, up to two, three minutes to load and sometimes it crashes um, Pro Tools. <laughs> so uh, that, that option or that, that scenario does not happen in ARC 3 because I've obviously gone through a couple for you there and you saw them load very quickly. So um, that's a great fix for ARC 3, at least for me. I don't know if anybody else has had that problem. But yeah, so that's basically the difference between the two um, there. So yeah, a much more modern GUI with ARC 3. Um, so I definitely recommend this product to 
anybody that is a non-treated studio or even a studio that's pretty well treated, but you know, not perfect. Um, really, stu no studio is perfect, to be honest, even the multi-million dollar studios. So if you can get something like this, and especially for the price, this is, this is priced very well, um, it's gonna help with your mixing quite a bit. Because the idea of this is that we put this on and then we're mixing in a near perfect mixing environment. And then when we go put this on headphones or we go put this in our car, it's gonna sound the same as we hear in the studio. And I know people listening to this tutorial have probably mixed on the studio mind. It's like, oh, this sounds amazing. And then you take it to your car or you take it to your headphones, you're like, it doesn't quite sound right. And that's why, because you're mixing in a non-perfect mixing environment. So this will fix that problem. So definitely get this product. <laughs> so yeah, so I hope you guys liked this video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe because I love making this content for you. And hit that notification bell to know I have new videos coming out. So until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.